Hey everybody, welcome to the Pixel Play Podcast, a bonus episode of the Pixel Play Podcast. My name is Adam, aka CS Radical. We have Kalen. I'm looking at the wrong camera. That way is the direction I'm looking at. That's Kalen, aka Catastrophe. And we have a guest underneath me. Uh in our Discord, if people are hanging out in the Discord, which by the way, you should be hanging out in the Discord. Like, why aren't you in our Discord? Hello? That literally is the place to be for all interesting gaming talks and mostly bashing things. But hey, it's still a good Discord. You should join it. Uh, Jin and Chris is here with us, and you're wondering, well, well, what's what's he got? Well, he must be from a podcast or something, right? I mean, technically, yes. You just don't know what that podcast is, but that's why we have a bonus episode, because we have a lovely announcement to make. You know, Kalen and I... Are you know we can't always do all the work on this on this channel. You know, some once in a while we gotta we gotta you know move things around and uh, you know I mean Kalen's a dad. You know he he wants to do more content, but you know there's something about this kicking and screaming child that just kind of prevents these things. So yeah. we wanted to announce that starting next week, every Saturday morning, hopefully we're not putting that in stone just yet. We have a new show. We were going to be doing a retro gaming show or a nostalgia fest. You can call whatever you want, but the name of that show is going to be quarter. Or, oh, I, I did the wrong order again. See, this is the problem. We do shows and then we have ideas and then you say them over and over again. No, it is called cartridge in quarters. Thank you, brain. That's what I said it was going to be when I made the logos. But yeah, me and Chris are going to be doing a retro show every Saturday. Kalen will probably, you know, show up eventually when the child lets him once in the blue moon but for the yeah. time being the plan is for the two of us and we are going to be doing not necessarily a show that's focused on anything other than the fact of just anything that's 20 years old so i think i've talked about this intro long enough uh i guess we should start with our new co-host and welcome chris officially to the pixel play family welcome mm. welcome one of us one mm. of us and i can't uh, believe just so you know, oh, there's just... there's no pay. I'm just, I'm just letting you know but... up front. There's no pay yet. We're still working what? on that. That's not what the contract said. Oh no no no! You must have read, not read the fine print. It was it was in Monopoly dollars. Oh, but you're actually worth okay. more than Ruples right now. Yeah, just so I'm true. I'm in. I'm in. Yep. I'm still in. <laughs> that, that would so, be fun. So... It would be funny to say actually we're paying you in Ruples right now. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't be expensive. <laughs> yeah, what, what, that exchange rate right now it feels like a it feels like euro trip you know walking into that uh bratislava hotel giving him giving the guy a nickel and now he has a new hotel he can run <laughs> that's not i don't like i don't know is that retro yet is that 20 that years movie? old it's oh it's very close that's it's got to be close, close to being like considered like old now right yeah I yeah, I'll, think I'll look so. it up for you guys. It might actually be or even more than 20 years. I feel like no, now that I think yet. about it. 20, 2004 was when oh, it came out. Oh, okay. So we're uh, almost yeah, there. Not even close. It, it, it can almost drink in this country, too. It can buy lottery tickets. Yeah, there you go. Okay. It's, it's getting there. <laughs> Progress. So, yeah. yeah. That's such a good movie. So, so Kalen, you know, despite the fact that uh, we've booted you out from a second show, I mean, totally, it was, that was really what happened. We actually just said, no, we don't want this guy in here. He's, it's already bad enough. We have to deal with him for one show. So uh, we thought we'd bring you on for this special show to talk about it. You know, retro gaming yeah. as a whole, like, obviously the podcast is going to be fun regardless. But hey, like, as, as an old school gamer, we're all in our 30s. So retro gaming, it's, it's a big part of all of us, isn't it? A little it bit of nostalgia. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm wearing a Sega Genesis shirt, and there's some Sonic the Hedgehogs over here. So, yeah, pretty big. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's definitely, like, I think all of us have probably been gamers for, if not all of our lives, most of our lives. And so, yeah, we're going to have those memories of being young game, gamers playing on what is now retro games. But even that 20-year gap, like, that's a pretty... It's weird when you think of like that. That's N64, PS1 era. Like, Oh, no, you can go to PS2 yeah, now. Like, there are now PS2 right. games that you could call retro at this point. Yeah, like it's crazy yeah. what is now considered retro. Because like I remember thinking like my dad had a, I think it was a Space Invaders handheld console thing from the 80s. And I thought that was really retro. Now that thing is pretty much antique. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy how things that we thought Word, wouldn't be retro like you look mm -hmm. back and you see something like final fantasy 10 mm -hmm. and you're like oh wow that's not that long ago and it's like oh wait no that's like 21 years ago yeah how is that possible like if it was final fantasy 6 or something on super nintendo sure but 
Oh, time's flying too quick, I guess. Well, it, it's, yeah. it's funny you say that because uh, I have a really fun article here that was done by CBR uh, saying 10 games that are turning 20 years old in 2022. Do you want to know how old we are? I do. Oh. Yeah. So I don't know if it's in any particular order, but these are the 10 games that they listed that are going to turn 20. Either they already have turned 20 or they're going to this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the number 10, Tekken 4. Oh, okay. okay. Because it was the first uh, PS2 Tekken game, I believe. Kingdom Hearts, the original, which that was oh. the one that made me go, oh, God, I am old. Yeah. Yeah. That's a... Uh... Wow, it takes like 20 years to get three of those, eh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> True. I mean, technically, it's more like three and a half because Chain of Memory sort of counts for most people. Once you get into like the birth by sleep and the 358 over two days and, and all the other so weird collections Harry. that they did, yeah. well, yeah, now we start to get into a weird spot. Yeah, that's true. I guess we did get a lot of games, just not the third one. Uh, Resident <laughs> Evil Zero. Yes, uh, Zero. I try to forget that one sometimes, but Zero. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Super Mario Sunshine. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. That one's hitting, that one, that one. <laughs> yeah, I, that felt, hurt. I felt that one in my SI. And <laughs> Wind Waker. What? Oh, oh my God. In right, Japan, stop. it first released in 2002. Oh. Okay, okay. Still close enough. And, because I keep scrolling down and there's more Nintendo, Metroid Prime. Okay. Uh, and then the one that kind of also got me, Vice City. Oh what? my god, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Vice City is oh. now going to be retro this year. Ah, that is It's still better than the current version that's on the Rockstar I was, collection. I was about to make that joke. Like they should make a definitive <laughs> edition of that game. <laughs> <laughs> it's better than the definitive edition. Ratchet and Clank the original. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Oh. Pokemon no, Ruby like and Sapphire. And then probably yeah. the biggest one, I think, to most people, Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. You're thinking Oblivion, I think, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my god. Which goodness. wasn't too long after, because I remember... Yeah, like, no, that's, that's next. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Uh, we old. We getting old. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm thinking right now, like the ones that hit, like you said, like Pokemon Ruby. And I remember when that came out, I'm like, I'm already a little too old. Like I was at that age where I was like, I'm not into Pokemon anymore. And it's like, oh, that's not retro. Like, oh, yeah. You know how I know that all these games are retro because I'm trying to find footage of them and they're all in SD. Oh, yeah. that, that's how you know when when YouTube videos of that game are not coming out in 1080p. And they're all in well, we four had... three definition. Uh oh, <laughs> that's oh, the best. We hadn't invented landscapes by that point. Yeah. I know it's. Man, yeah, we had not invented them. Yeah, <laughs> they did not exist in the real yeah. world. It doesn't matter where. We had to invent the rectangle at this point. Everything was still <laughs> squares, and that's how we liked it. You go to look up all these trailers, and they're only the videos pulled off those discs that came with PlayStation Magazine. It was like the demo disc of just. Small demos and trailers. <laughs> Man, yeah. those are the good days, though, when you had, like, the old, like, PlayStation original discs that just came with, like, eight demos of games, and you played the crap out of those. Yeah. Like, you got, like, Spyro and, like, Siphon Filter. Like, the legendary demos that we got back then, like, Metal Gear Solid's original demo was, like, legendary to most people. Like, that was the thing that you remember oh, yeah. going to, like, back in the day, too, and Walmarts used to have, like, the the old uh, console games there, you know, and you'd be sitting there just playing that same demo over and over again, because what else were you going to do while your parents were right. shopping for 60 minutes for jeans you didn't want in the first place? Yeah. Craning your neck all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the way up. Yeah. The freaking like 15 I, feet in the air TV screen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got one for you guys. When you guys, when McDonald's had that run where they had like N64s in like their, in their restaurants. Yes. In yeah. the like, Some still do. Area. Yeah. What? Yeah, there's, um, I, I haven't been there in a while, but I remember like three or four years ago going to the one where I used to live for most of my childhood and it was still there, even though they'd remodeled the building, it was still there. Yeah. Cause I, like I always associated that with like Diddy Kong racing was always running on that. Oh system. yeah. Usually it would have been Mario Kart 64 was the main one that I usually saw, or, um, I think Pokemon stadium would have been the other one that I used to see a lot there yeah yeah i definitely remember diddy kong racing yeah. for sure being there 
Maybe it's still there at that one because they don't know how to get the N64 out. They're like, crap, we didn't make this like where you can open it. They like cemented it in so well and they're like, okay, well, it's, 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 it's like obsidian. It's lo- we can't take it out. It's a, it's a load bearing kiosk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. But man, yeah. like it's, it's funny too, because we'll end up talking about this a lot on the show, but like. It's weird how, you know, now that we're calling some things retro, it doesn't feel the same because not everything is aged the same way. Because, like, you can take an SNES game, like, obviously me right now being the big Final Fantasy speedrunner, you know, playing 4, it doesn't feel much like a game that's that's antiquated. It hasn't really felt like it's aged because graphically it does. But if I popped in, like, the original Final Fantasy 7, my God, does that thing look like ass. Thank God for the remake because it, it really did, you know, remind you that, hey, stories can be good. And now you don't have to worry about looking past, you know, the jagged edges and the triangle titties that like Lara Croft is sporting back in those days and everything else. It's it's just it's so strange now because nostalgically we look at those games fondly and we still want to show them to our kids. But you know that like that reaction will come where you're like, man, this is what dad used to play. And they'll look at this and be like, this game's ugly. What? Why did you like this so much? Oh, yeah. But we didn't know any better. We thought like the original Gran Turismo on like PlayStation was like the peak this is as good as real as it ever gets. Yeah. And, and yet here we are now looking at what Horizon Forbidden West is and soon soon with PSVR being like or PSVR 2 going like, man, this is this is it. And ten years from now we'll be talking about what that does and we'll be like, holy shit. Yeah. Horizon um Zero Dawn will be retro soon and then we'll have to have an episode of that and it'll be really messed up. Yeah, we're going to look at Horizon yeah, Zero Dawn and be like, man, this this hasn't aged as well. Actually, I don't think that'll be as o- as obvious, but... No. If you just want to like, wow, you guys didn't play this... You guys just played on TV. You guys didn't use, like, the, like, immersive sphere tool or anything like that? Like, yeah. you just sat on a couch? Wow, that's lame. Yeah, the, vir- Dude, the virtual... you played in 4K? We're, oh, we're yeah. going full circle. You're finally going to get to the virtual boy aspect of video gaming once again. Yeah. Oh, virtual... Oh. oh, God, my friend had one of those... That, oh, that yeah? gave me a headache. It was awful. Oh, and he paid full price, like launch day. Oh, my Ooh. poor buddy. And it, yeah. it, I guess it's also interesting, too, because you think about that stuff back then. I mean, there were even like, you know, there was some aspect of like motion controls way back when, too. Like, we have seen like old tech evolve and actually become really good tech. Like, um, it, it does relate to the Virtual Boy, but like we're seeing with PSVR 2, there's already starting to be some tests being done by like journalists and other companies. And a lot of the words that are being talked about is that like, dude, like this is actually like incredible. And when people are being like, Oh no, you're just being hyperbolic with what you're saying. And they're like, no, actually like they've legitimately taken good steps here. And Kalen and I have already talked about this thing a lot and how excited we are for it. Kalen owns a PSVR. So he's fanboy fan boy. Going to buy it when it comes out. Number one. Yeah. And the, the more and more I keep hearing about it, the more that I'm like, I'm still trying to wait at least a year to see what the library is looking like, but it's going to get real hard if this hype keeps getting to me. Cause this is sounding really good. Oh. 100%. I'm there with you guys. It also yeah, gave me I'm... an excuse to use my main living room that I haven't used ever again because why would I leave my stream room now where all the good stuff is? I'll have an I'll I'll excuse to use the only room that has remotely amount of space to stand up in. Why would you want to be in a real reality when you could be in a virtual one? I'd mm-hmm. rather be like in a, like a TIE fighter fighting like pilots and stuff than being here and on my couch. If, if we ever get the board. holodeck in real life, you ain't seeing me ever again. <laughs> as long as it can produce food yeah if it can, if it can cover all, all that stuff <laughs> and if water. i can if i can cover every bodily function there and never have to leave a room i'm good we're, we're done i think that's a lot of people yeah i i, 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 I feel well especially if you ask them right now in 2022 i think that is the case yeah this is like a little of a side thing but like in star trek when they would leave the holodeck to go back to work i was like you guys aren't even getting paid what are you doing well, the reality <laughs> is, is they, they, they would they would turn the off switch and be like, drone, get the fuck back to work. And you're like, yes, sir. And you just spend well, like the rest of your day dreaming like, OK, I'm going to go back in this. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this, <laughs> which is like me in real life when I imagine what a lottery victory is going to be like. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then you realize, oh, I got to go back to work now. <laughs> this is true. This is yeah. actually kind of like real life. <laughs> yeah, this is supposed to be retro gaming. And now it's getting too real again. Damn it. This is true. We're talking about, we're talking about Star Trek. We're still in the right realm. Yeah, kind of. It's not it's it's not like the Sims where, you know, you get to, you you know, get a job and you're like, oh, wow, I get promoted. I didn't know that was possible in work. I didn't know you got raises and promotions. I didn't know that existed. Yeah, oh, like what's that? Sims Things are affordable. I can afford a house. 
I mean, just like the Sims, though, there's cheat codes to get money. We just don't know the cheat codes. Yeah, I know. I haven't, yeah, figured, I haven't figured out the mother load code in this in this life. I type the economy code into everything, and it, it never just randomly gives me stuff in real life. Yeah, sometimes you accidentally hit people in the process, too, which is not great. <laughs> and that's one thing I miss about, like, old games is the cheat codes. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's obviously, like, the Konami code, but for me, like, when you guys are talking cheat codes, the one that kind of stuck with me was uh, Age of Empires. And like the cheat codes you can get with those, those were just amazing. I forget what it was, but you could get a cheat code where you basically got a monster truck that had like infinite hit points <laughs> and like like didn't infinite damage. You could just literally just drive a monster truck over like other people's like villagers, cities, whatever, and it just demolished all of them. And like I just I don't know. I miss those the cheat codes of just randomly screwing up a game. Oh yeah. Especially yeah, on PC and stuff, they had so many of those and Actually, I guess all even on consoles and everywhere they'd have them. But I do remember the monster truck one uh, with Age of Empires. It was oh so good. Yeah, like nowadays, if you're lucky, you get like Easter eggs and like hidden spots mm-hmm. once in a blue moon. But more along more along the lines now, if you want cheat codes, it's going to cost you fifteen ninety nine. Yeah, and it disables trophies or something, and you're like, oh yeah. screw that. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> like the ones that the ones that I can think of off the top of my head, like the three obviously Konami codes, the easy one, right? Mm-hmm. And then after that, you think of the blood code when you were playing Mortal Kombat on Super Nintendo, or the mm-hmm. other one is like the more modern one is whatever code was always rocket launchers or removing wanted levels in GTA. Yeah. Like those were always yeah. the ones that you were like, okay, this mission sucks. I'm just going to have like infinite rockets now, and this is all going away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, GTA was notorious for having so many different cheat codes. Just like coming out of the hospital because you just died and you just spawn like money and cars would fall from the sky in front of you and you're like, all right, I'm good to go. Yeah, you're, you're sitting there on NeoSeeker and looking at the uh, the list of cheats there and you just keep scrolling and scrolling because it just doesn't stop. Oh, uh, cheats.cc. That's yeah. where I used to go. <laughs> look, at, look at you guys with like internet connection. I was growing up in like a rural area, so we didn't have much internet. And so it was literally just a notebook with all the like the codes written down on a piece of paper and that look, was it. Look, to be fair... <laughs> Back in those days, we, yeah, we had internet connection. (laughs) You know, that old 56K. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. R2-D2 would load up your internet. You know, you're you're, you're in the middle of playing, like, Yahoo Pool, and all of a sudden, Grandma calls, and now you had to forfeit the game because the connection broke. Or you're playing StarCraft Online, and your sister picks up the phone, which disconnects you, and you get a loss... Sorry, that was just a memory that came back. <laughs> triggered for them. <laughs> I got triggered. There's gonna there's gonna be a yeah. lot of memories triggered from this show. That's for that's for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It shouldn't be cartridges and quarters. It should just be uh, triggers and quarters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, I remember, still makes sense. I remember with us, uh, with me and my buddies, we'd play Grand Theft Auto, and the way we played is we did the. You got like all the weapons. And then it was just you had to get to five stars as quickly as possible. Or we got automatically on five stars. And it was just who could last the longest while being chased down at five stars. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah, like the one so, thing I, I just did... remember wasting summers sitting on like sitting on like my buddy's bed. We're all just huddled around TV and just playing that. It was the best. Yeah, like yeah. the big one for me was always going into Vice City. And I would get a three star because it was the most fair. There was just like a lot of extra cars, but there wasn't like the tanks and everything to make it really difficult for you to get around. And I just hop on the PCJ 600, the fastest bike. And because I knew the map so well, I would just see how long I could go on that bike without getting knocked off. Mm. And I would just be going through shortcuts and jumping over like the highways and doing all these things. And like, it would always end in the same spot. It would end on the beach because I'd run into a person and then it would just start throwing you off. And then finally, like just some random cop car would spawn in the set dead center of the beach with where the draw distance didn't catch it fast enough. And then bam, you just fly off. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, GTA, such good memories. Yeah, I mean, technically, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe GTA Five will be retro before Six comes out. That's always possible. Oh, it's getting I mean, there. Yeah, it's like what? It was twenty twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. It's, it's, it's very unlikely, but hey, the joke still yeah. works. It's I mean, now it's on three there. consoles. Yeah, we're halfway there. It's on three yeah. generations now. It might as well be retro. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, for for everybody here, um, since we were talking about old franchises, like, what's the one that you're all killing to see make a comeback from, like, the, from especially in the past 20 years? I mean, you can dive back as deep as you want. It doesn't even have to be when you were born. It can be, like, way back. Just, like, something you'd want to see, either a remake or just a full-on brand-new game. 
That's a good question. Yeah. I feel like I would know your answer, Chris, but maybe you're thinking a little bit more than, than just the obvious one. Ooh, why, what, what do you think I would say? Well, I would assume a, a proper Chrono release again. Oh, oh, how did I not think of Chrono right away? <laughs> Oh, especially with Chrono Cross getting re-released next month. Yes, a, a, a really good third Chrono Trigger. You release. remember the old rumors of Chrono Break? Yeah, Chrono Break. They could still use the name. I'd be okay with it. It's re it's really is amazing though when you think about like how bad like Square loves using nostalgia with their fans. You'd figure Chrono would they would have eventually finally said, "Fine, here's your stupid Chrono game. It's not even going to be that good, but just so you guys shut up about it." Greatest selling game of all time. Boom. <laughs> it, I mean, look at what Kingdom Hearts 3 did. And most people left that game and be like, I don't know what the fuck happened. And we it's all bought it Kingdom because Hearts. that was Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> nope. I think for me, I, I want to see, I'd love to see like a resurgence of the RTS genre, particularly like mm -hmm. Command and Conquers and Age of Empires and stuff. That was the stuff I spent far too much time as, as a kid playing. Like I remember playing uh, like Tiberian Sun, Red Alert, Age of Empires 2, like Age of Kings. And I just remember them. And I just, they kind of fell off the map. And I know like you still have things like some would argue like League of Legends is that kind of thing. Like the top down game. Like Warcraft, I think was like the last big RTS that I can think of. But I don't know. I like, I, I feel like that's one for me. I'd like to see kind of make a resurgence and not necessarily, I think if I had to choose, I think I'd slightly choose Command and Conquer. And caveat, I know people are like, oh, there's an Age of Empires 4. I don't know. It doesn't hit as much as it used to. I think maybe that like time and place is gone, but I'd like to see particularly Command and Conquer make a comeback. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys, did you guys play Command and Conquer as a kid? Oh, Red Alert. I used to yeah. play. What was the one song? Hell's March. I yeah. think there was a song in it. Yeah. I used to. Pl I recorded that onto a cassette with a microphone off my computer, so I yeah. could listen to it while I would go deliver newspapers. Nice. People oh yeah, it's I a badass song. Oh, yeah. I was badass delivering, you know, newspapers. People probably thought I was crazy because I was yeah. kind of into it while I was doing it. I mean, we're all yeah. gamers, so te there's not really that far off. I meant more like the 90-year-old lady I was, like, giving the newspaper to, but kind of, like, coming up like this with, yeah. like, my Sony Walkman on. <laughs> did you guys... So, like, Adam, did you play Command & Conquer? I played the original Red Alert, but I don't really re recall much. The only thing I really recall is what I need to recall, which is just Tim Curry. Okay, so, I, I'm going to blow your mind. Did you guys know that there was a Command & Conquer first-person shooter? I didn't actually know that. Look no. this up. Command & Conquer Renegades. I played oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was so good. I don't, I, I remember, I don't I remember, I remember that. I have to look it up. Yeah, so Renegade, Command & Conquer Renegade, you were playing as a GDI force, and, like, the main campaign was, like, kind of, like, whatever. It was forgettable, but... They had an online component and like you'd have like if you wanted to get a tank, you had to like you got currency from like your harvester, but you also got money from like blowing stuff up and destroying things. And what you would do is you would go into the enemy base and they had like a co um, construction zone. They had like their barracks. They had their uh, like silos, harvesters, all that. And you could go into the buildings and like plant C4 onto it. If you planted it, it would blow up the building and then that resource would be destroyed unless you like went to the command center and paid to get it rebuilt and stuff it's honestly it was one of those games ahead of his time it was so good i'm gonna be looking this up after the show yeah hey, no, take, honestly take a look at like do a quick google search on it right now it's it's quite good and they had all like the iconic weapons and stuff you could send down like an ion cannon onto like things like you had like a little beacon you could drop the ion cannon down i think it was the other one was, was like a chemical warhead or nuclear warhead i can't remember what what nod had anyways yeah this it was a fantastic, fantastic game it also, it also yeah, it makes me wonder, like, how Blizzard never got the idea to, to do StarCraft as a first-person shooter. Well, they were. They Ghost? were for a while. StarCraft Ghost. I thought that yeah. oh, I, I didn't remember much of that. I always just assumed it was another just StarCraft game. I thought it was just, like, another side game. I didn't yeah, realize StarCraft it was actually Ghost, a shooter. I think that trailer came with the WarCraft 3 game. Did it not? I remember, oh. That's a good question. I, think I wasn't too game, big in I... WarCraft. I remember it being teased as a possible, like, maybe N64 or something. I don't know. Like, it was a long time ago. Because all most yeah, people Starcraft remember about StarCraft Ghost was just, like, the promo art. Because, again, the internet likes girls with big butts. So, you know, that's just how it works back in those days. You know, you just put you just put a girl with facing away from the camera and then just kind of, like, looking like that at you. And that's pretty much all they needed back in those days. Yes. That is all they needed. And then, and then Tomb Raider just got smarter about it, where they put the code if you wanted to see Lara Newton, and said she exploded. 
<laughs> they got you. Yeah, no, so it's it's along the same ideas as StarCraft Ghost, but yeah, Grand Conquer Renegades wasn't perfect, but it was actually really ahead of its time in terms of what it did, and I remember sinking so many hours into that. I might find a way to sink hours into it now. <laughs> well, I'm, I know right now Steam has, I think, the Command & Conquer remaster set. It's like 10 bucks. I'm going to yeah. be buying it right after this episode is recorded. This feels yeah, like I mean, this, this show's a bad idea because it's going to make us all want to go back and play old stuff and possibly spend money on it. My wish list, uh, my backlog is so huge, but I already have the Command and Conquer like remake or not remake, remastered or whatever <laughs> version on Steam wish listed. I might have to just buy it and <laughs> ten bucks, man, pull the trigger. I'm just gonna have to pull the trigger on that. Yeah, one. I, I'm pulling it tonight. So yeah, this, I, this, I don't know what the show's gonna, play gonna be dangerous. I'm... This show's a horrible idea. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Mine. It's my idea. Chris spends yeah. money. <laughs> the show. Like, I'm about you. What, you... I was going to say, going back to you, because you asked us what are like what ones we'd like to see make a comeback or resurgence or whatever. What about you? What's the franchise or game that you'd want to see kind of well, make Well, I, I mean, I got two directions for it, because, I mean, like, I was about to say Suikoden, and then my brain went, actually, the makers of it are making Aiden Chronicles, so technically it's ex- it's going to exist at some point. So if I was going the JRPG route, Shadow Hearts would be the next one to me, because I like the idea of what Shadow Hearts did, which is more of, like, not, like horror as in like resident evil like silent hill horror just horror elements like there was a little more of like witchcraft and like more like death and blood focus there was more like um like the macabre like like there's a lot more like almost like um like the mexican like day of the dead level stuff like it was just much more like darker it wasn't like dark in terms of like what japan likes to think dark is which is just people die a lot which is not necessarily what dark means but um, that one was a big one because all, the, all they were all in PS2 and they were all pretty decent games. Like I always suggest to people, if you're ever looking for like sleepers on in those eras, like Shadow Hearts was big for that because ba- no one that I knew ever had heard of them. And, you know, they were interesting games because it was one of the few games that had a battle mechanic system that wasn't just limited to like fight and or just like button prompts. This one was more of like you, it's almost like um like a wheel of fortune thing where you're rolling, but you have to click it in time to get the proper hits. So there'd be a wheel and there'd be these couple of slats and that have an orange one and a red one. And the red one was like really thin, but that's your crit. So if you hit that, you get the crit, but if you ever miss it so slightly, it's a complete miss of an attack. So there's a risk reward to it. So it's like, it's you have to be really precise to get like the best damage for it. But if you want to play conservative, you just get it in the bigger wedge that's easy enough to hit and you're fine. But it also is like in typical Japanese format, they just go balls to the wall stupid. Like you have a guy who is this old man who is like an like an American ninja master, but he doesn't use proper weapons. Like the weapons he gets in the game, he just puts sticks on every, or not sticks, uh, hilts on everything. So he has like a bus stop sign or a cactus or a swordfish. And then you have like, the pseudo Jackie Chan drunken master, but it's a giant cat. So like there's stuff like that as your party members. It's like, it's goofy, but then it also has this like horror monster aspect to like the villainy. So in, in it's like Yakuza, but a JRPG before like a dragon decided to do that. And I always Ooh. love like the, the quirkiness of it. If I was going for anything outside of like my real nerdgasm, it'd be like a proper bond uh, shooter again. Cause those, those were the good old days getting like your night fires, agent under fire, golden eye even the world is not enough for n64 wasn't that bad everything or nothing i think on 360 was decent even though it was a third person shooter but like we really haven't seen like a true to form bond shooter since probably nightfall i think would be the last one i consider i'd say nightfall is probably the last one because they because people have tried but not very effectively there was a quantum of solace game but it wasn't great there was even a remaster to the uh golden eye one no there's there was um there were two james bond legends there, there were two attempts at it and they both sucked <coughs> oh right there, well, was there, was legends. James, there was yeah there was legends there was golden eye reloaded a... and then there was also mm-hmm. 007 legends yeah but legends was a brand new game that wasn't a remake of golden eye well but it was them trying to like use it as like its way of getting it back and it still was horrible you you think they look back at like the shooters that we see today? Like we see Doom had its resurgence. We've seen Wolfenstein have its resurgence, and then they pissed it away again. But that's that's a whole other story. But like all these other games have like started getting a trying true format again, and yet you'd think, especially with the Bond movies still being as popular as they were, that they try to capitalize on it. But every attempt they've really done hasn't had that much effort. It seems. I 
I don't think a James Bond game would work in this day and age. I think you could. Like, I mean, like, I'm not going to say it's impossible. Like, you know, you get someone who does something creative. But, like, if you think about it, like, it wouldn't be a James Bond game as we think of it now. Because, like, unless you went and did a third-person action adventure, which I think is kind of what iOS is doing or... um I was doing IO Interactive is doing with their like they're using the Hitman games on that. But I think like using a traditional game like GoldenEye kind of thing doesn't work because if you think of the shooters at work now, it's things like Doom and Wolfenstein, which are fast paced, you know, rip and tear kind of extreme aspects or live service games um, like Destiny. But I would argue that Destiny has like classes and they'd have different experiences like I don't I can't think of a first person shooter that is just hey you're a guy go around shooting things like you'd almost have to make it like a like a first person like tactical espionage game kind of like almost like a first person um splinter cell and to get that spy aspect but i don't think you could be like hey you're james bond go rip and tear now because that's not necessarily the james bond way so like just to say hey here's some guns like you got call of duty but call of duty only does you know they still even do that fast paced shooter thing so I don't know. Well, we've seen I, I, games I that kind of do it. Like Deus Ex has, well, I mean, Human Revolution did a decent job with like subterfuge in a first person shooter format. So I think it's doable. It's, you, it's just not, it's you, not as easy. You've got the modifications in that, which I, I like, I'm, what I'm saying is that at, like first person shooters now have, it's a first person shooter with X differentiator with the exception of Call of Duty. And I think that's the problem is that if you went with a first person shooter and just said, hey, we're a grounded first person shooter we went through that phase where you had things like black and you had things like call of duty and um, you know, brothers in arms and all that. And it got oversaturated because it gets repetitive. And I don't know if it will hold up well in a call of duty battlefield kind of world, because most people don't play those for the campaign. So you're gonna have to create an area shooter, James Bond. And I don't know, like, is it possible? Yeah, it could definitely happen, but I don't know necessarily that it, that it will. I think that that time and era is kind of gone. Sorry, don't mean to be the downer. We could always just put James Bond in Fortnite. That'll solve it. Hey, the kids don't even know what James Bond is. <laughs> no. I That's the movie what... my dad watches. <laughs> James Bond can build now. <laughs> Look, Dad, he's flossing. <laughs> what, what a world that we live in that all of a sudden now, like, we play video games and be like, oh, there's a Spider-Man tie-in and it's just Spider-Man with a friggin' MP5 shooting things in Fortnite now. <laughs> it's like, oh, what happened? Yeah, you, you know, it just, just got big. Yeah, I was just waiting for the. the has Shrek been that in that game yet? Because I feel like that's inevitable that Shrek's gonna be in that game. How has Shrek not been in that? Now that I think right? of it, he's the most like memeable character <laughs> that's just in things. You know that yeah. when Thomas the Tank Engine. You know that when yeah. a Shrek movie comes, if another Shrek movie gets done, Michael Myers is now back into back into the acting game, so it's possible. So yeah, I don't think his voice has really changed or anything. He I'm glad he's turned it. himself around from a life of murder. I, I love how he turned he turned over a new leaf and decided to do something different uh act as like many different people in the same property just 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 amazing amazing range that he's ever done you know just doing just doing something different from what's usual to him yeah like do try something new you know like that, that's good he did <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty funny you go back and you and you see stuff and it, it finally makes a comeback and you're like oh maybe they'll do something cool with it and it's literally just the same stuff again you're like well, I don't hate that, but like, <laughs> I, I was hoping to see something. I just, I, I love that scene in the in the movie Baby Driver, where they like, it's supposed to get Mike My Michael Myers things. These are Mike Meyer masks, <laughs> and they're like Austin Powers. <laughs> yep. That's right. Yes, that is a good movie. That is a very good movie. Yeah. It just makes me think, though, because um, you know, since this we are talking about retro games. Were movie tie-ins horrible back in those days? I mean, yes. I mean, like almost every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. I still remember. I still have trauma from playing The Lion King. Like, I remember because I like I remember hanging out like at a story makes no sense, but we were like with a bunch of friends in the summer, and like we were hanging out in a trailer playing Lion King on a small like twelve-inch TV, and it was just brutally hard and i didn't yeah. realize it was really hard i thought it was totally attainable and i'm just like man we suck we just need to keep trying on this and there were literal fights about like no i need just one more turn i can make this and it was no elden ring is not actually a hard game 
<laughs> yeah, Lion King is the real Dark Souls. Yeah, that game was hard. But I do remember yeah. the the Aladdin games from the same time. And the Genesis one, I did really, really like that one. So that tie-in wasn't so bad. It was also weird, yeah, because back in those days, they weren't even the same game. No, it was two different developers. I think it was like Capcom was Super Nintendo, and I don't know who did Acclaim, maybe? I can't remember who did it the It might have been Genesis Acclaim, version. yeah, that makes Acclaim sense. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, an old, Mortal... that's an old name. They used the Mortal Kombat engine and uh, just... <laughs> Yeah, you know, that part where, like, Aladdin, like, ripped out Jafar's spine, you know, that was cool. I mean, that was the whole point of the game. Yeah. <laughs> y- Yaga was actually the animality. Just pecks you in the <laughs> eye until... In- <laughs> actually, that's, oh, that's that a lie. Happened. Yaga would be uh, the Sindel finisher, just because it'd just be Gilbert Gottfried yelling at you. <laughs> now that's a guy who's retro. <laughs> 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 Did you ever see that he did like a YouTube video where he was like they were doing like the audiobook for Fifty Shades of Gay, uh, Grey as read by Gilbert Godfrey? So funny. Uh, did not know that. That was a yeah. fad too, where you get like all these act like I remember um Duke Nukem John St. John was like doing yeah. like readings of like certain passages from that. Like everybody hopped on that train because again, there was something just so great about like the dumbest lines of dialogue being said by some of the most recognizable voices. It just no, yeah. works. You, you gotta search. You gotta search uh, after this, Chris. You gotta search for Gilbert Godfrey reads Fifty Shades of Grey. He I'm, just does his typical vo- like voice and just starts reading like the erotic parts. So funny. I mean, he better do the whole book because once I'm in that, I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the book enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, that's the only way I'm gonna. There are like that's the close I'll get. Can you imagine like uh, any like any audio book just in his voice now? Like any like like we're all Expanse fans here, so like. You know, if we uh, could li- like literally have the entire Expanse books read to us by Yaga, how just absolutely bizarre, but probably still amazing that would be. <laughs> It'd be so good. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I've Man. listened to so many books by that guy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and from now on, he has to do every autobiography telling stories. Like in like he's t- he's t- it's the first person in the actual book, but it's him reading it, so it sounds like it's him telling stories about himself when it's actually somebody else's stories. <laughs> Yeah, this would be a great idea. Oh, man. So we're hitting nearly 45 minutes, which is roughly what we were looking at. So I'll, I guess I'll end on this one before uh, we get prepared for rest- or starting a brand new show. Like I said, at Saturday mornings starting the following week. So you get one console and three games for the rest of your time on a stranded island, then it has to be a retro. So it has to be at least 20 years. So you basically can think of like PS2 and back era. What console is it? And what three games are you taking? I assume the three games have to belong to that console. Well, I mean, you can take, I would only you, be- can, <laughs> you can take Mario party if for all I care, but if you get it to pick an SNES, it's not going to work. So you can <laughs> do whatever like, you want. Three, this came to the N64. Damn it. <laughs> Which of these can I create fire with? So I don't die. You can blow the cartridge as many times as you want. It's not going to turn on. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a good question. I, like, I know the area I'm going to go. I'm probably going to go with a PS2. I'm thinking I wouldn't go PS1 because the PS2 was just like a better version of that. But then it's like, okay, what do I take? Like Final Fantasy X, Kingdom Hearts. You only get, you only get up else? until 2022, so you only get like the. Oh, right. Year. You can only choose like the. All right. Yeah, you'd be choosing like, like really early PS2 games at that point. Okay. Well, I know Final Fantasy X and Kingdom Hearts would work. Oh, but Super Nintendo. Oh, that's, that's the challenge. Why, right? why you do this? <laughs> Because I know immediately it's Super Nintendo. And the reason for that is because, well, I have a lot more to pick from. So that was my first basis. And immediately, Final Fantasy 4 and 6, and then it's really a ringer between Super Mario RPG and Super Mario World, depending on what I want. My brain would pick RPG just because it's longer, and I could could replay that over and over again and still enjoy it. Not to say that I wouldn't enjoy Super Mario over and over again, but like, I actually, you know what? No, I'm cheating. Final Fantasy 4 and 6, and Super Mario All-Stars, because it's more than one game. Oh, you did cheat, but that counts, because it's a cartridge. Those are good picks. Those are very good picks. Those are my two favorite Final Fantasies. Oh, this is tough. And you're stuck with them forever. Yeah. But, like, I wouldn't be mad about it. 
But you'd be sitting there and be also- like, man, I really miss Link to the Past, though. Oh, Link to the Past. Why'd you have to throw another one into my <laughs> <laughs> Why you do this? You Look, know what? I, I probably go... I, I love. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking Super Nintendo, and I'm just going to throw in uh, Super Mario RPG, Chrono Trigger, and Donkey Kong Country. That, that's a RPGs good, that's a good and then one platformer that's kind of tough, so I'm not going to get through it real quick. You guys are morons. We're stuck on an island. There's no electricity. There's no TVs. <laughs> I'm going with a Game Boy, guys. <laughs> are morons. Oh, oh so, okay, so you're going to get about four it. hours of time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, How many it's only four hours. It's more, good luck with, like, where are you going to plug it in, guys? You're not thinking. Use your brains. <laughs> oh, Game Boy uh, actually so, would be a good pick. So I, for that, I'm going to stick with the Game Boy just because I'm, I'm going to die on that one. Uh, I'd probably go with... Uh, it's a toss-up because, like... I kind of want to say like stuff like Pokemon or Super Mario Land or, you know, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I think one of the essentials I need is Tetris. Mm. Just because that's one you can just kind of play on loop. Yeah, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be Pokemon. I think Donkey Kong. You, you got to pick a specific one on Pokemon one though. You can't, you can't just vaguely state it. I mean, it's Pokemon. It's going to be Pokemon Blue. That's okay. The one I yes. okay. So Pokemon Blue. Good Pokemon day. Blue. I'll, I'll go. Oh, the Donkey Kong game was really good on Game Boy. I'll go Donkey Kong and Tetris. Those are good the platforming that's get open world and that gets something that's like replayable. Do that score chasing. So good luck with your consoles. Plug them into a coconut, I guess. See what happens. <laughs> hey, best. I'm it's gonna not... smash it into that coconut to try and eat it so I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's gonna be on you, and you're sitting there with your no batteries, and I'm gonna crack open a coconut, and there's just gonna be this mysterious electric outlet just sitting in it for some reason. <laughs> just like, hey Gilligan, look, we made a generator. <laughs> and I'll be like, hey Kayla, look, look we at can this. Make everything thing. here but a boat or a radio. <laughs> look at look at all this electricity you have. Oh, what's that? You want a charging cable for your Game Boy? Oh wait, you don't get one. <laughs> I just imagine I'm going to be like holding up like weirdly to the moon so I can get that glare so I can actually see the screen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't get you don't get any peripherals. So you don't have the little flashlight. Exactly. Yeah, there's no backlight on that. There's you're I, not getting anything. <laughs> I remember driving home like in the car with my parents and just like every, like just trying to get the most light out of every street lamp as we pass. by yep. just to see what's happening. Oh, you, yeah. you stop at a red light. You're like, oh, finally, I can face this boss now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, I died three minutes ago. Dang. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's where I was. The battery's been dead this whole time. No wonder I can't see it. <laughs> oh, double A batteries. Yeah. Still needed in Xbox controllers. Yeah, that was that was a weird <laughs> thing when, when I when I opened up my Xbox. I'm like, wait, why do I gotta put batteries in this thing? <laughs> it's charging you know, no matter what. Makes, What's the difference? It kind of makes it like it, in the one sense it's kind of dumb, but at the same time, like I got a bunch of PS like three controllers that are dead now because the battery can't last for more than five minutes. So like, there is an argument to be made for the double A batteries versus the yeah, lithium battery. Yeah, yeah, or at least to make the lithium battery replaceable. Yeah. But why? Why? Do yes, that? I know you can open it, but I'm not going to do that. So. But why do that when I can just be you know a Sony pony like like we obviously we are, and just whenever they put a new color out, I go and buy another one. I hate I hate and love the new controllers with all the different colors on every console because I just want them. It's like I want the purple one now. It's like I already have like three controllers and I'm one person. Why would I need? Yeah, you're staring. You're staring <laughs> at all your controllers and you're like, and you're looking at them like they're skittles. You're like, I I, I need I need the entire rainbow. Yeah. But remember, don't eat your controllers though. It doesn't. It, they don't. They don't taste that good. Yeah, I it's guess like, that's. Or you have to get all of them together to like make a super controller. Oh, they're like the Megazords. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if I get all eight PlayStation 5 controllers, can I make a wish? I mean, we haven't tested that yet, so it's very possible that you can. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to That is pay- very good point. I- I'm going to have to go to the bank <laughs> and be like, sir, can I take it alone? What's it for? I'm going to collect the PlayStation controllers and wish for immortality. You, you no. Know, that's the worst. You wish for more wishes. That's the rule number one. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, remember, I'm, I'm a bad guy, so I got to be like the typical Dragon Ball villain. It's always immortality. That's all it ever is. It's always immortality. See, I feel like that one's that's a very monkey paw because it's like, yeah, you're gonna live forever. And like Of course like it's monkey, it's Dragon Ball. You're five hundred years old, just like crippled in bed, and you're like, Oh, I got more years to look forward to. Like <laughs> muscle. I should, have met... you have like like <laughs> I should have said and stay young. <laughs> well, the inevitability when you're immortal is eventually the planet's gonna collapse and you're still alive, and you're just like, Well, I guess I'm just gonna float here forever now. <laughs> yeah, theoretically, you're just sitting out in the cold darkness of empty space, just 
alive. And then where do you plug the plug the Super Nintendo into? Damn Nowhere. it! <laughs> All right, I, 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 I should have that Game Boy with you. <laughs> I should have gone with the Game Boy Advance. Who was I kidding? Oh, that would have worked. Yeah. So yeah, uh, obviously, Chris, welcome to the Pixel Play family. Thanks so yeah, like I me. said, Cartridge and Quarters, our new retro game show, will start presumably. The following Saturday morning, just like all of our growing up shows, like here, us all Canadians, we grew up with video and arcade top 10. We grew up with Electric Playground. So Saturday morning was kind of like our home for us. I mean, you know, what, what else, what more do you want to do than watch Pokemon, Sailor Moon, uh, Digimon, a bunch of other anime in the morning, and then also watch a bunch of kids get to play games your parents won't buy for you? You're also forgetting the classic Mario show, the Super Mario oh, Happy Show. Oh, yeah. Right? And the Legend of Zelda fall right afterwards. Oh, I have those on DVD somewhere. <sighs> well, excuse me, Kalen. Mario, I think, is actually on one of the streaming platforms right now. I, oh, I think it is. Yes, yeah. it totally is. Same as the uh, Sonic uh, the Sonic Saturday AM and then the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Because he's nice. the fastest thing alive. I just always think okay. of the Super Mario show. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, the Mario. I don't I don't have enough room to do any dancing and for the for the sake of our audience's well being too, I don't think I should either. So I, I think <laughs> I think before anything gets worse, we should end this off. So yeah, like I said, new show incoming next week. Obviously the Pixel Play podcast is not gonna change, but will still be Wednesdays uploaded as it normally is. That won't change. Same with like state of plays. They'll still come up the day afterwards. You know, maybe we'll, maybe the upside to having me and Chris here on a Saturday means we could actually like secretly talk about stuff and make Halen mad because he's not there. Hey, that's my territory. <laughs> Stay off my territory. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we're not really going to be a format. Probably that first week, we'll probably just end up just talking about Final Fantasy for about an hour, and that'll be mostly it. No, no, hour, knowing Chris and I, and that will probably be the entire show. Yeah, for about a year and a half. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we'll just we'll just be lamenting about how Square never never makes Chrono games and like how you know it just isn't. Like, we'll we'll just basically be old men being like back in the good old days. At least we get sixty frames back though. We'll we'll take that. We'll take sixty frames being a thing again. Yes. So yeah, thank you so much for checking out the show, guys. This is weird actually having to be the one to do the outro because it's usually this guy's job. So and I do it so well. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've you had like you you've had like sixty episodes of practice, so you probably should have. So, you know, look, indulge me in in allowing to do one outro here. So, with that being said, thank you so much, guys, for checking out the show. If you did like what we had on the show, hope you enjoyed it because we did. Ha <laughs> ha! Taking some of Kayla's stuff. Uh, if you can, in the description below, we have things like our link tree, which links to all of our stuff: Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. Same with a link to our Discord, which, like I said at the top of the show, why aren't you there? Excuse me. Excuse me, viewers. Why aren't you in our Discord? But yeah, Wednesdays from now on, Pixel Play Podcast. Saturdays, Cartridge and Quarters. Looking forward to doing all that stuff with you guys, and we're looking forward to talking more video games here on this channel. And by the way, I didn't mention it. Uh, Cartridge and Quarters will also be in the same audio location so we're the same spot you get your pixel play podcast you will get the bonus podcast as well we're not going to split it up we look i know i know two clicks is really hard so we want to make it as easy for you guys as possible so we're going to do that for you so yeah that's going to do for the show guys we will see you again back on wednesday when we come back with your normal regularly scheduled pixel play podcast where kaylin gets to feel not left out anymore and get his intro powers back so <laughs> he's just looking at me like you asshole <laughs> i just noticed you avoided segues well, I, I don't oh. need to. I don't need to. Oh, it's been. Oh, it's the time. I noticed you didn't do any, so what are you going to do? <laughs> you got to work on those, my friend. But yeah, we're done. We'll see you guys Wednesday, and then we'll see you next Saturday when we start the new show. Goodbye for now, and enjoy both past and present, and obviously soon the future. Except for, uh, except for that cyberpunk game. It's still bad. <laughs> <laughs>